I'm a PhD, by the way, doctor is just for my mom, right? <laughs> I wish she was here. Um, so let's wake up a bit from the lunch and I'll try to get you involved. Please raise your hand if you ever needed to explain to someone that machine learning stopped learning and it's actually a batch and the data set is complete and it doesn't keep on learning in deployment. Raise your hand. Thank you kindly. So <laughs> that's exactly what I had when I came from ecology and I was surprised that I know machine learning and maybe it uh, should have been uh, known as machine learned and not machine learning, right? So the traditional machine learning is basically, and, and we can argue later, is some manipulations. You give uh, input and output and you tell the machine, figure it out by yourself. Okay, but the problem is that once the learning is completed or basically once the model is deployed, no more learning is occurring, right? It's a static, immutable model and it's like a missile that you launch to space and you launch and forget you, okay? Maybe you have the best ML ops, but still you cannot touch the model itself. You cannot change anything. You can only monitor. That's the good uh, scenario. But as we all know, our world that we live in is very dynamic, right? Only death is static. Everything changes. The environment, uh, people, their behavior, and as such, clearly the underlying data and the data patterns are keep evolving. This can and actually will result in model degradation, in its uh, predictive power and performance over time. Um, and will give you eventually poor results. So even if we live in a perfect world and you go on your unicorn and you easily deploy your model in production and everything was so smooth and so easy, your model now is in production, you have a confusion matrix that you wanna take a photo and put on your parents' fridge, and then time goes, and the model starts degradating until that point you get that call, what's going on with my model, right? And then you need to figure out what's going on, take again the data, maybe even ask your client to send new data, to retrain, to do the whole shebang again, the whole model training uh, scenario, and it brings a lot of challenges with cost and scale, right? Both the repeated, the, this never-ending retraining and more models and more models and the model you already deployed now is not working. So on top of the new models, you need to retrain the old model, which will actually require us for, for scaling up for real vast amount of models, an army of data scientists. What we really want is a model that keep learning, right? incrementally learn each time new data is available. Um, here you can see an example the, of a neural network that uh, was trained on scans. And as time goes, scanners change a bit, technology changes a bit, and the, the upper banner is a static model that degradates and, and practically useless. And the second model is a model that keeps learning uh, on dynamic memory and hence is learning the new patterns is changing and you can use it for much longer and it saves a lot of time and uh, money. So basically, what are we talking about? And this leads us naturally to the online incremental learning that is our topic. So to define it, let's pause for a second and you didn't turn the timer by the way, so I take as much time as I want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Basically, let's, let's uh, focus on two terms, okay? The offline and the incremental, because learning we know. So first of all, here you can see the traditional uh, offline uh, batch learning, the entire data set at once. Um, it has its advantages, usually if all data is available, if data uh, fits your memory. Um, this is the traditional, most of algorithms work like that. It's, it's uh, well established and uh, basically, I would dare say this is like almost 100% of industry, okay? That this is what is done. Now, the first step that we can do is to take, we're still offline, but now we're learning incrementally. This means that once the first learning on the entire uh, data set uh, was done, 
we then keep getting new batches of data, but we don't train on, we don't take it offline and train the entire data set. We're just taking the new added data and we incrementally change the model that we already have. This gives us some advantages. We can react much faster. Uh, it's almost real time. It's not real time because the model still needs to be deployed, okay? Uh, we can react faster, it's good for, for memory uh, efficiency, um, but it is very, very sensitive to its parameters, the, the batch size, the volume inside the batch, the, the timing between batches, and so on and so forth. Um, and the real gold grail is to go online. This means, and you can see that uh, we are distinguishing here between the green rectangle and the purple one, between the learning process and production. So now the online means that everything happens actually in production. So my model learned, adapted, and for the next prediction, he is already ready. Okay, and now let's do a bit of more distinguish. Uh, we'll just take a couple of them at a the, at the time. So moving from the offline increment, from the traditional on the right hand to the incremental on the left hand, so you can see that we can react faster. We have, um, I cannot read what, what, what I've written, so you'll have to trust me. Um, <laughs> you react faster, it's memory efficient, it's almost real time, and um, the main limitations, it's, it's uh, complex implementation, it's different algorithms, uh, not the ones that are common and, and very much in use. And it is, uh, it may have a lot of, as such, it may have a lot of uh, computational uh, requirements in order to do that. And now going for the difference, as we said, between the incremental uh, offline and the online. So clearly online is inherently incremental. Okay, but the difference, as you can see, is here we have the batches and the model trained, model trained and only one satisfying some kind of a rule or, or whatever, you go to deployment. And on the right, your left, my left hand, your right hand, you can see the online, which is actually being updated in production as it is deployed. So in order to make this entire fantastic systems, actually you need a few main uh, gradients. First of all, advanced analytics over streaming data. In the online incremental learning uh, realm, we actually don't know the statistics of the incoming data. It's not as easy as the batch, right, that you know in advance all of your data. You're not, you don't know what's coming, and hence the advanced uh, um, EDA is, is necessary. We have all kinds of uh, detectors. Everybody's talking today on, on concept drift, but it's also data drift and model drift and all kinds of other assumptions that we make for our data, stationarity, heterostochasticity, and so on. Of course, you need to have the oil models or the algorithms, which are different than our common algorithms. So for example, XGBoost we don't have. We have an adaptive Hofding trees, we have uh, Mondrian trees, all kinds of these trees that are more, uh, that, that are uh, for online learning and are capable to adjust and to change as data comes. Uh, we have a model for exploration exploitation in order to, to optimize when we update the model because sometimes it, it doesn't worth to, to update the model or you don't need to. Um, and then we have a model for the optimized model update. Clearly you can change features, you can change uh, weights, parameters, and you can even change the the entire algorithm or, or model. And uh, a final model for competitive analysis, uh, not the one that the market's doing <laughs> on each other, it's a competitive analysis between the offline model and the online model in order to validate and, and verify its performance and even more, its ROI, because we put in there also consideration as memory consumption and times and CPU used because honestly, to take the whole data down and to retrain will give you the best results every time, okay? We can even take it to, to entropy because you have all the states open for you, while in incremental learning, it's like evolution. You are constrained by the, by, by, by the past steps, right? But it's much more expensive. 
hence the trade-off, and you need to see exactly where, where the line stands so your CTO or CFO or whatever will, will approve putting this in, in production. But that's, of course, just a simplification. We added all kinds of uh, cool stuff, which are actually patented, such as optimal experimental design. Uh, we live in a, it's, 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 it's bigger than big data. I don't know how to call it. Call it. It's enormous data, uh, three million transactions per day sometimes. And I don't really want to train on all of them, right? So we pick only the one with, with more information. Then we have a patent on that. Uh, we have all kinds of uh, concept drift characterization. We're not just detecting concept drift, we're giving it characteristics, so we will know what's the best mode of action to, to handle this one. Uh, regret analysis and, and all of these uh, cool things that, that you can see here to, to support this. And it's quite easy, all you need to do is to, to follow this design or something like that, um, which will give you all of uh, these advantages. But, uh, and we can argue if, if some things here are maybe redundant or the same, it's a, man, it's a matter of terminology. But at the end, our goal end is to get to automated, scalable, and low cost production. Okay, models that last longer in production, that needs less attention, and the ca can handle the changing in uh, reality. So, that's the short time I had. I hope you, you got something, um, and of course I want to, to thank the, the people who are actually doing this job. <laughs> Elena Maliarski and Nitsan Tal, two of uh, my best in my best team. And also I just want to say to a former employee of us, Maria Zatsepin, who also had a contribution here, also thank you for her. And thank you for you, for having me, for <laughs> listening. <laughs>